So even though she's accomplished as far as her secular pursuits are concerned, have earned her uh, doctorate. Got a whole lot of folk in the church. Uh, what's up, Doc? <laughs> I didn't have a high school diploma. <laughs> we all claiming doc. But she is a doctor in her own rights with an earned degree as a medical physician. It puts her in a unique place. Amen. To help her past. All that in Luke, I have my devotion. Amen. We all need help. You know. Amen. Praise God. And she's been a great help to me both physically and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And to this district as well as the jurisdiction. Amen. Her work has been impeccable. And we are so grateful to God to have given her to us. Mm -hmm. Amen. been anywhere. Amen. And I thought she would have been anywhere when she came. And we had the little church over on 7th Street. And she came and she was just as happy as if though we were in a cathedral. <laughs> Same glad windows. Five, six thousand members. She was happy. And I thought, wow, what a rare gem is this? <laughs> I know for sure she head down to Texas, one of the big churches. Put on her big hat, parade around, let everybody see her. But she was content to be almost servant led of the Spirit. And stayed with us. And pretty sure she was glad she did. And she met her boys right here. <laughs> You don't have to go to New York to get a husband or a wife. I'm going to preach the mind that you all come to tell us some wonderful truths concerning our Pentecostal worship and do some comparisons with the charismatic movement and evangelicalism. Account where the saints are now. And I guarantee you, you come back and you're here, you're going to experience some newfound freedom. Mm -hmm. It's time for the saints to be free. Mm -hmm. Souls are waiting on us. Amen. Come and get them. Mm -hmm. So I'm back and let us hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. But right now, amen, we're going to hear a short note from the choir. What I say? Coquita. I stay with that fish. That's the voice you shall hear. Is that of this missionary, Devon Jackson. From the moment to rise and receive her, and she shall come. And right now, let us hear from the choir.
praise and we honor your wonderful name. We celebrate your glorious presence in the room. How we love you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Now, Lord, have your way. Whatever heaven has scripted, cause it to come to that. We have no agenda but yours. We've got no plans but yours. No design but yours. We don't work for any man. We don't work for Caesar, but we work for the Lord. Now, God, God, put me real need up and bring glory to the sweet Savior. We pray it all in his precious name, the name of Jesus. Saying, thank God. 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 Amen. 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 Amen.
We are subjects of a glorious king. And because we love him, we give his name the truth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We honor the Lord our God. We serve the God of heaven, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God, Jehovah, is his name. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. The reason I specify what God is because some people have another God. And he carries another name. And we don't come to make anybody feel better, but we're not here celebrating our Allah. Because our Allah does not have a son named Jesus. We come here to celebrate the God of the New Age movement. And worships man. We didn't come here to worship the God that they call Buddha. Because our God is not locked up in a building over there in the statue. We serve the God that sits on the strip of the And we come to heaven by his footstool. We serve the God that comes from the strong. And is called them all by their name. We serve the God of heaven. It's a time he said it's no other. Precious host pastor and our superintendent, all of the precious pastors and the men of God, our first lady of the district, all of the precious first ladies, and all of you, the sweet people of the Lord. It's good for us to be here. Yes. I said it's good for us to be here. Yes. But this is an opportunity to give our God the glory. Yes. And we love those opportunities. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank God for this revival. Yes. This service and thank God for this open door and privilege, amen, to stand before you, the sweet people of the Lord. Well, it's about time for a miracle. Yeah. I'm going to know it's about time for a miracle. The theme for this wonderful uh, revival, amen. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. About time for a miracle. Yes. And the passage of scripture that we have comes from the book of Galatians. Some of you may have your Bible, some of you may have your program. And the theme scripture is Galatians 3 and 5. And it says, He therefore that minister to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And that's the question. Somebody called it a rhetorical question. Yeah. Rhetorical question is when you ask the question and you already have the answer. Yeah. And the person you're talking to already knows the answer. But the question is to stir them to think about the answer. Yeah. And that question has been put forth to find out whether this miracle working God is one that we approach by works of law or whether we approach him by faith. Yeah. I am persuaded by the word of God that we approach him by faith. Yeah. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith it's impossible to please him. I said, without faith it's impossible to please him. But he that comes to God must first believe he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently yeah. seek him. So the question tonight is how many God seekers do we have in the house? Lord. Not only seekers, but do I have any God chasers in there? Anybody chasing his family? Oh yeah, I'm in mean, hot pursuit of him. And I think about, they show the animal shows where they show the lions and uh, various ones at meal time. Uh -huh. I don't know if you all watch the animal shows, yeah. but when lions are really hungry, I'm not talking about they just ate yesterday, but it's been a long time and, and now it's coming to the time of the year where the great antelope migration has already passed. And so they don't have, you know, thousands of them. You just, you know, they say, like, throw a rock and a pack of dogs. Where if you have the great migration of the antelope, it's no effort to get one. You just stumble up over there and you can lay hold of one because there's so many of them. But when the antelope migration has already passed and all the wildebeest have already gone south and now they've been hungry for a little while. If they spot any stray one, if they spot even about this time, they'll take a bunny rabbit. Amen. When a lion is really hungry, they are in what we call hot pursuit. And that bunny rabbit may be fast, he may be able to leap, and he may be full of energy, but he's not going to run the lion that day. Because the lion has made up his mind, I'm having bunny rabbit for lunch. Over a creek, or it goes up the side of a hill, or it runs around, a, it runs 
around a small mountain, anywhere that the bunny goes, the lion is going to go. And because his eyes are fixated on the bunny, he's not getting away. That is the way we are to pursue the living God. for God. But real Christianity is for those that have made up their mind that they will love and follow Jesus. They love him with all of their heart and their mind. That's That's real Christianity. The one you saw on TV where people are kind of like, oh, I'm a Christian too. That's not real Christianity. Real Christianity, they're so in love with Jesus until they are not tattooed themselves with the markings of the world, but their soul has been branded with the mark of the Spirit. And we belong to the Lord. That's real Christianity. And that's what we're talking about tonight when we say it's time for a what? Miracle. It's time for a miracle. When I saw the thing, the word that uh, struck me was the word time. Mm. The thing says it's about time for a miracle. Now the word time is uh, used uh, often, and in our common language, most of you have heard some of these phrases. One of them is that time flies. Yeah. How many have heard of that? Yeah. That means that the time is moving swiftly. Some of us can hardly believe it's December of 2018 already. I still remember Y2K. Everybody yeah. heard the computers were gonna shut down and all that, yeah. and all the banks were gonna shut down and everything was gonna go into total chaos. Hallelujah, and that was 18 years ago. Now, I didn't believe that the world was coming to an end, but I did go by the bank and get a little bit of it out of there. Just in case. You know, the Bible did say to make preparations. What man is it that go to war and have counted up the cost? So the little $10 I had in my purse, I didn't think that was going to be enough. Amen. To make preparation, but time flies. Yes. Here's another phrase we hear often. Oh, I made it just in a nick of time. Just in a nick of time. That means I just barely made it. Now that should only be an occasion, but some people live their life. Everything they do, everywhere they go, it's always just in a just in a nick of time. Then here's another one. It's high time. Now this phrase was used more so years ago, like you see it on the Waltons, where parents would say, it's high time you dealt with that bedroom. Yeah. What did they mean? Yeah. Get in there and clean up that room. It's high time. It's time for you to take care of that thing. It's high time for something. Here's another one that we hear a lot about. Time is of the essence. Yeah. That means that there is limited time, so we need to pick up the pace and get into a hurry. Not only is there common uh, words in our uh, conversation about time, but here's another one. Sometimes people say, third time is the charm. And that's to encourage you, even though you tried the first time and you didn't succeed. And you tried again and you didn't succeed. It says to keep at it. Stay with it. Don't give up. And that's a word for somebody tonight. Don't give up. Tell somebody next to you, don't give up. Tell somebody on the other side, don't give up. Scripture also speaks a lot about time. We find that the scripture speaks about something called the fullness of time. And God acts when the fullness of time has come. That means that all the pieces are in place and everything is in perfect order for that great event to occur. And God moves when it's the fullness of time. God's time is not ours. The Bible says in Isaiah, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. How many know how far it is from here to heaven? Yeah. Did your GPS have any information on that? Yeah. But heaven says long ways. 
And that means that the thinking of God is a long ways higher than ours. So that means that God doesn't operate on our time schedule, but God knows what he's doing. Because he is eternal, he abides outside of time. He only stepped into time for our sake, but he is the God of eternity. The scripture goes on to challenge us about time. Uh, even the scripture speaks in a sense about daylight savings time from the spiritual aspect. Right. Daylight savings time is designed anyway so that you can make better use of the hours of the day when the sun is up. Yeah. And the spirit challenges us in the scripture, challenging the church to maximize our opportunities for the Lord. Yeah. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. While it's day. Because the night cometh when what? Oh, so the church must maximize, live by a spiritual daylight savings, and maximize yeah. our opportunity. Yeah. We need to maximize our opportunity to study the word together. Yeah. We need to not take for granted the blessing of corporate prayer. Right. We need to make sure we don't take for granted and skip over the privilege to learn of one another in fellowship. Let me say fellowship. fellowship. And we don't want to despise the operation of the spiritual gifts that God has placed in the midst. Yeah. This is the way that we take care of it. Ephesians 5 and 15 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And we know that this is necessary. To redeem a thing means to buy it, particularly to buy it back. Some of us have had time and opportunities that we've let slip away. But God is wasting and said, now I want you to redeem the time. I want you to make up for some of what it may have gotten away. Amen. Here's another phrase we hear about time. They'll say of someone, maybe someone named George, he's got a lot of time on his hands. And that often means he's sitting around idle and just a lot of time on his hands. And he needs to be going to work for God because the scripture warns us about the smokeful. The smokeful person, the scripture says in Proverbs, smokefulness causes one to sleep and it also causes them to end up hungry. Most people don't like to be hungry. Well, then don't be idle. And there's another phrase, the scripture deals with this. It says, it's only a matter of time. And that lets you know that thing is going to happen. It's only a matter of time. And we have some great and precious promises in the word of God where we can look at each other and know the certainty. It's only a matter of time. The scripture says in Psalm 37 and 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. It's only a matter of time. Here's another one. They say, it's all in good time. That's teaching us, be patient. That thing is going to happen. But we have to wait on the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good word, courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, you know, waiting is a word that's dual in its understanding. On the one hand, wait would be like a person sitting at a bus stop, and the bus is going to be approaching soon. And the person that's sitting on the bench is said to be waiting on the bus. Yes. But there's a whole other use of the word yes. wait, and that's when you go to a restaurant and you sit down in the seat. You're looking for somebody to come over and take the menu from you and ask, may I take your order? Yes. That person is called a uh huh. And that's an active type of weight. And we as believers are called to both. And the one, we're supposed to be able to rest our spirit man with a contentment like a person waiting on the bus to come. Not pacing around the bus stop, but seated because I know the bus is coming. So therefore I can relax. How much more I know the Lord is coming so my soul can be at peace as I wait on the Lord. Now, even though our soul is in a state of quietness and waiting, yet our life is active and we're like the waiter or the waitress in the restaurant. We're serving up the Lord's dishes and providing it to the world. Yeah. The world cannot get to God, so we have to go back in the kitchen and get what the Holy Ghost has stirred up. Bring it out to the people and serve it up to them. Amen? Yeah. And then do it with a smile. Yeah. Yes, we're waiting on the Lord. And then here's one more. It says, uh, many people, when they talk about time, they say, it's a race against time. 
that means that there's something that has to be done and it requires attention because there's a deadline. Yeah. Yeah. And for us as believers, this is how we should view eternity. Yeah. We are operating on a deadline because the Bible did say as a thief in the night. Yeah. Oh. No man knows the day of the hour when the Son of Man is coming. We know he's coming back, but he didn't give us a date on the calendar. And all of these false prophets that give you a date, every date they give you, it doesn't work. Because the Lord said, no man knows the day of the hour when the Son of Man is coming. No, not the angels in heaven. prophesy Jesus is coming on Thursday at 4 in the afternoon. Why are we looking for him Thursday at 4 in the afternoon? If any time he comes, if he does come Thursday, I guarantee it won't be at 4 in the afternoon. We live in a state of readiness because any day now, let me say any day now, any day now he can break the skies and return. So we live with a readiness. Thessalonians 5 and 2 says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Yes. Robbers walk up to you and put a, a, a gun to you or whatever and say, This is a sticker. Put your hands up. Walk into the bank teller. This is a robbery. Don't push that emergency button and give me one. That's the robbery. You know you're being robbed because you're looking at them and they're talking to you. But there's somebody far worse than the robber and that's called the thief. The thief gives you no announcement. The thief gives you no warning. And the thief will rob you and you don't even know you're being robbed. Well, you're sound asleep. He has disarmed the alarm system. And he's downstairs stealing all while you're upstairs snoring. You don't know what happened to you. Wake up the next day and pull open the drawer that had your fine china and all your silver and find out that it's gone. Yeah. As a thief, not only a thief, but a thief in the night. Yeah. Like the five virgins that were wise and the five foolish, yeah. our bridegroom could come at any time. Yeah. And I don't want to be a foolish person. Yeah. I want to have some oil in my vessel. Until the bridegroom comes. Watch therefore and be also ready because the Lord doth come. All of these tell us about the significance of urgency for time. Now, what is the significance of time in general in the life of the believer? Because even though we are eternal beings, we're living right now in a temporal situation. Yes. And the scriptures here says uh, uh, various things about time. One of them is if you think about plants, a seed, uh, let's say an acorn, yes. the difference between an acorn and an oak tree is just time. The difference between a kitty cat and a full-grown Lawrence cat is time. The difference between your newborn baby and a seven-foot 225 pound basketball player. Yeah. The difference is time. In the same way that time impacts things in nature, animals and plants, time also impacts us. Yes. And that's why we as the believer have to be on the alert. Yes. Because we do have an adversary. Yes. The devil who go about as a roaring lion. And the same time that all these other beautiful things are going on, our adversary has been busy too. Because there was a time when the divorce rate was only 10 to 15 percent. That was back in the 1920s. But time has made a change and now the divorce rate is 46 percent. There was a day when a uh, time when in school, when children went to school, they all pledged allegiance and they had prayer before class began. But time has caused a change. Even one's been busy and now the same God that they used to pledge allegiance to in the name of God, pledging allegiance to the country, but in the name of the Lord, and the same God they used to pray to, now he's not to even be mentioned in that same school. Because the evil one's been busy. But guess what? He'll never outdo God. While he's been taking prayer out of school and while he's been disturbing marriages and while he's been tearing up home, God's been busy too. And 
hear some things. Look what the Lord has been doing. God has taken ex-gang members and turned them into preachers of the gospel. Yeah.
they take volunteers. People come in, Mother Clark, and they say, I want you to come over here and make some photocopies. I want you to come over here and stack these flyers. And I want you to stuff these envelopes. And I want you to walk around and put these flyers and staple them on telephone poles all over town. Because it's campaign headquarters. Yes. And you believe in the candidates. You believe in their platform. You believe in their cause. Yes. So you down at the, where are you? Campaign headquarters. Well, I came to tell somebody tonight, we're in campaign
Some people, some of the women are on a campaign for the women of the world. Yes. God loves the women of the world, yes. but we can't be on a campaign for the women of the world. Yes. Some men are on a campaign that men are making a comeback. Yes. And they're on a campaign for the men of the world. Yes. But we can't love Jesus and be on another campaign. Yes. Some people are on a campaign even for uh, financial issues. Yes. They're on a campaign for all of those that are making below a certain finance. All those things are important. We're going to do mission work. But we can't be on a campaign for those. Yeah. Our devotion yeah. has to be one place. Yeah. Because a divided heart is an ineffective yeah. heart. Yeah. Yeah. Only one thing should be on our mind enough to disturb our sleep at night. Hallelujah. And that ought to be dreams about advancing the kingdom of God. Yeah. Thank you. Only one thing can consume our energies during the day. What's that thing that when you're exhausted, you'll still do it through your exhaustion? Yeah. Which campaign is it that gets you up out of the bed? I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes it's not Jesus, but we'll get up out of the bed for our other issue. Are you with me? One campaign, one candidate, one mission, one purpose, one design, one pursuit, one heartfelt devotion, and it's got to be Jesus. 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 Not at the chair. Not at the chair. Mm -hmm. 
The fourth one the evil one uses is preoccupation. So many of us, this is campaign what? Headquarters. Campaign headquarters. And everybody in headquarters should be buzzing and busy. But everybody in there, they're doing their different duties according to their assignment. Stuffing the envelopes, making the copies, taking care of the buttons. But everybody's working on one project. Yes. And that's their candidate. Yes. The house of God yes. should be buzzing yes. with busyness. Yes. But Glory. with one campaign. Oh, six can be here tonight. Yes. With one campaign. Yes. Sometimes a campaign happens. Yes. The evil one by deception has caused preoccupation. Yes. And there's busyness and activity. Yes. But there's more than one project going on. Somebody's making flyers for another cause. Somebody's stuffing envelopes for something else. And while they're preoccupied with another thing, they never get to the church. But oh, God has given us an opportunity tonight. Because it's about time for us. Oh, it's about time for them. But the church refines her focus. And we're not looking all center at the piano, but we're all focused on the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a time for a miracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I was preoccupied with the cares of this life, yeah. and the deceitfulness of riches, yeah. and the lust of other things, yeah. and have been choking, this is Bible, uh -huh. right? The thorns yeah. choke out the seed that's been sown, and yeah. it becomes uh -huh. unfruitful. Yeah. Notice in that story of the soul of the seed, some of the seed fell on good ground, yeah. it brought forth balance. Some of the seed fell among stones, uh, fell among stony ground, it got started, but it didn't have much earth, so it couldn't last. Yeah. Then you have some that's on the wayside, it was off the crop. Yeah. But the scariest group of all is amongst thorns. Yeah. Because this group, they did start growing. Yeah. And they did start producing fruit. Yeah. But the cares of this life. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says, and the deceitfulness of riches. Yeah. And the lust of other things choked out the word yeah. and it became unfruitful. Yeah. Which means once upon a time, yeah. it was fruitful. Yeah. And here's the problem with that thorny branch. Mm -hmm. You can still see it. Yeah. It looks like it's going to produce. Yeah. It's just a plant now, but it's got no fruit. No fruit. Yeah. Still got all your titles. Still got all the positions. Yeah. Still keeping up with all the services. Oh, still name on program. Mm -hmm. Still singing. Still teaching. Still preaching. Still trying. Still you. Still working in the usher. Yeah. But there's no fruit. No fruit. There's no fruit. There's no fruit. Thank you. There's no fruit. Oh God. Because you. destruction and preoccupation yeah. and loss yeah. of focus mm -hmm. and misdirection yeah. took us out of a fruitful path. Thank you, Jesus. But it's about time! Yeah. It's about time! It's about time! Oh, man! Bring us down the campaign headquarters!